Please welcome back Paul B. Preciado. Thank you. That was quite Thank a screen. Thank you so much. What do you have there? Oh, I always trouble with uh, Virginia Woolf. <laughs> because he's been with me from the, the beginning of the project. Yeah. And I never thought we will, you know, come this far with this project. So now she's traveling with me. I want to start by asking you because I think this will illuminate some things about the film, um, about the title. Um, not the Orlando part, but in my political biography. Um, I'm curious why you call it my biography, because even though you're in the film, we hear you throughout the film, um, and you are one of the Orlandos, but of course there are many Orlandos, and it is, I think, very much a, a collective portrait, a collectively author authored text. So I'm curious about the choice of the title, and I'm also curious, I guess it's a two-part question, like what makes a biography political? Yeah, well, I have to say that I'm still trembling, you know, because it's, this is such a big room, and like seeing you, all of you, you know, <laughs> watching the film was, yeah, yes. You're an amazing, amazingly beautiful audience, thank you. Well, actually, maybe um, maybe I have to come back to the the story of the how I ended up making a film in the first place because I never thought I, I would make a film in my life. But what happened is that the um, French German TV production house, which is called Arte, uh, they called me and they said that they already had a project, like an idea, to make a film about my life, uh, in a sense, my biography, right? And that they already th thought about uh, a film director that will do it, and they just wanted to get in touch with me to document themselves about my life. So I was quite horrified by the idea. <laughs> Not just because I, you know, those things really happen when you, you already, you know, you die, and then, <laughs> then people, I mean, whatever, for the worst, for the best, people may eventually <laughs> write or do or film your biography. But when you're alive, it doesn't make any sense, right? Or at, at least I thought. But not just because of that, but also because the way in which first trans lives have been narrated, represented, represented within cinema. This is one of the... One of the reasons why I, I didn't want, I would say no one else, but I didn't want in any case like uh, a binary filmmaker. And when I say binary filmmaker, I do not just think about like someone that is binary that will do my biography and oh, this is horrible, or horrifying. And what. I'm also, I'm, I'm speaking about a, a particular gaze, a particular way of looking at the body, a particular way of using the camera as a kind of a, as a technology for producing the truth of the gender of the people that are being represented. And also about how traditionally and, I mean, especially until very recently, trans lives have been uh, told in cinema, right? Or represented in cinema. So I immediately said, no, I don't want these this biography, my biography in particular, to be to be filmed by someone else, and I I mean what I thought is that the film would not be made, right? That, that I would say no, and they would say like, okay, fine, we just like uh, give up the project and we will not make it. But you know, against all kinds of expectations, they really wanted to make this film, and said no, no, we really want to do it, and so I didn't know how to stop them from doing it. And then I, yeah, sometimes happens, you know. Uh, and then I, I went to a meeting of producers and programmers and curators and so on. And 
trying to convince them not to make the film, I didn't know what to say. I said, like, make a biography, make a film bio a biopic of uh, Foucault. And they said, no, 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 no what, how boring. I said, like, make, <laughs> make a biopic of uh, Monique Bittig and say, who is Monique Bittig? I said, like, oh, like these people, they, you know. I know. <laughs> And I said, there's nothing that is interesting in my life. I'm a writer. I'm, you know, you just like I'm mostly in libraries and just, and then traveling and talking to people. So you know, it's, this is not interesting. But they had this idea, of course, of representing a trans life with the before and the after structure, with the idea that you have been born in a certain place, gender has been assigned to you, and then you make this kind of strange, weird decision that you want to change. And then something, woo, something happens, and ho, ho, the after comes up, right? Um, so, but so trying to stop them from doing that at a certain point of desperation, I said, well, in any case, if you want to do my biography, the best and only way of doing it is, an, I, and I said, a documentary adaptation of Orlando by Virginia Woolf. <laughs> and saying this, I thought this is gonna be the end of the conversation. <laughs> they will, you know, they will, they will say, okay, fine, goodbye, you know? And suddenly they were like, wow, this is a fantastic idea. You know? <laughs> and then someone in the room said like, but who's gonna make this film? And then the director said, the, the, like the head of programming said, Paul, Paul would make the film, <laughs> you know? And after all that conversation, I didn't know what to do. And then suddenly I said, and maybe this is also about transitioning, right? It's always been not exactly there where you're supposed to be, but moving somewhere else. And then I said, why not, <laughs> you know? And then I realized that basically I came out of that room having signed a contract to make a film, <laughs> out of all things, of all, an adaptation a documentary adaptation of Orlando by Virginia Woolf. And then when I met the two people that would be, at the end, my producers, one of which was, is here with me today, and I introduced her to you before, Annie Ohio, and they were like, okay, so tell us what is a, a documentary adaptation? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, you know? I basically, I made it up <laughs> for, this, for this meeting that I had. And, you're like, so what is this? How is the, the film going to be? I said, I have no idea. I need to do research, you know? So I started to think about the film a little bit like, like using two methodologies. One, thinking about a film exactly as I think about my books, about a book, right? Like basically when you, when you have to write a book, you document yourself, you work, you do research, you, you know, it's not just you have an idea and then that's it, right? So I started to, to work on the, on the work of Virginia Woolf, or, of course, like reading her, like almost, oh, I have to say like almost praying. <laughs> and that's why maybe she's coming with me all the time because she became Saint Virginia Woolf. I always <laughs> pray, but give me, why, why do I mean by a documentary adaptation, Virginia, <laughs> please <laughs> tell me. And, and also, you know, and for a month or more than a month, even more, I maybe, two months, I didn't know if I would be able to make the film, or I even, you know, maybe I thought I had to like call them back and say, this is a bad idea, I, I'm not able to do it. But then when I was reading Virginia Woolf, first, immediately I thought, well, maybe Virginia Woolf was a non-binary author, you know? And this, this is something that I never thought before. This, of course, I mean, and that we kind of speak about that. Why, why, why this idea of Orlando came to me in this meeting? Of course, I mean, but but when rereading Virginia Woolf, I started to think maybe I mean because of the way she's playing herself, and this is an answer to your question as well, with fiction and reality. I wouldn't say documentary in her case, but fiction and reality, because she's, she she wrote three biographies in her life. It's a lot. For, for an author, three biographies. One of a, an artist friend, another one of a dog, and another one of Orlando, right? And Orlando is called Orlando dot dot a biography, right? So this is truly important because it means that from the beginning, she's already challenging the distinction between fiction and reality. And I think that that was 
fundamental for me to be able even to make this film. And maybe why, why in, this, in the meeting that I had with the TV producers, the, the idea of Orlando came to me, right? Because honestly, I had never thought about that before. And I guess that is because basically when I found that book, I guess that I read that book when I was like 12, 13 years old in a literature class. They have, there were many books that you could choose and read. And without any explanation, I don't know why exactly, I, I chose that, that book. And of course, I mean, maybe for the people in the audience, maybe you don't know, but I was born in Spain in the 1970s. Uh, Spain was at the time a dictatorship. And when I was growing up, being a teenager, even though Spain was transitioning into democracy, let's say, quote unquote, more or less, whatever we, and this idea of transitioning is also interesting. The whole country was transitioning, but it was nothing around me, no references, no text, nothing, no images that could explain or could um, make me think that my life could be possible. Everything that surrounded me pushed me to think that my life was just like impossible or that I, I didn't even exist, something like that, right? But reading that biography, what I thought, because I was a teenager, was like Orlando, a biography. So I thought, it, it doesn't matter if it's like 300 years because Orlando is living like really 300 years. For me, this was a biography and this was the proof that my life was also possible, right? So I think that something really interesting happened at that point when basically fiction, became for me more important than reality itself. Maybe that's the key as well, why I became a writer in the first place, right? Like, I, because fiction was a surviving tool for me, and I had to, to you know, get hold to fiction in a sense, right? And I guess that that's the reason as well why this book became, you know, like suddenly, came back to my mind like so many years after. Because as you might imagine, I mean, I'm not just walking around with Virginia Woolf. Now I am, but at that time, I'm, you know. So maybe because of that. And I guess that as soon as I started to, to really believe that I could do it, which was not the case at the beginning, it was because I thought that I, I was not alone, that I was not, I had the, this intuition that I was Orlando, I was one of the Orlandos, that I, I had come out of the, of the fiction of Virginia Woolf, but I was not alone. And the sense, I mean, for me, even though people might not think is the case, for me, what you just saw is my biography. I have the feeling that um, my biography can only be told with the, even with the dead, even with the struggles, even with all those that have never had uh, had had a biography before, before, or the stories of people that were not told, or they were erased, but also all the other people that appear in the film. Yeah. You know, now that you've finished the film, would you still describe it as a documentary adaptation of Orlando? Very interesting. Uh, maybe yes, I don't know. Why not, you know? Um, I guess, I mean, it's also, it's not, I, it's not, an, you know, it's, I think the relationship, I'd maybe like to hear you talk about the relation, your, your relationship to the book, because it's, sure, in some way an adaptation, in some way it's a tribute to the book, but, you know, it's, it's telling that the, the surgery scene <laughs> in the film, uh, what is being operated on is the book. Yeah. So I think it's a film that also um, has an, a, maybe a more confrontational relationship with, with the book. There's a kind of, you know, you're, you're contesting the book too. Well, because the book, there are many books, right? The thing is that we, we are surrounded by fiction, but there, there are certain kinds of fiction that have been inscribed within society, naturalized, legalized, that have been given the power to 
you know, to decide who is a sovereign subject and who is a subaltern subject, right? For instance, what I say in the film, like every one of you, you have a, something in your pocket, which is a passport, and you, your passport is, a basic, is conceptual poetry, right? But you also have a dollar in the, in the pocket. It's the same, it's a poem. This is a poem, it's a small poem that says like, this is a dollar, but what is... So in a sense, uh, many of the, many of the, let's say, social and cultural techniques that we do not question anymore and that we just see as fully natural, in reality, they're, they're fictions, they're political fictions. So for me, I, I would say that beyond beyond the book or the film is for me the, the issue and the question of fiction, right? And we are made of fictions, but some of the fictions have been credited, legalized, acknowledged, recognized, and some other fictions continue to be just like a, you know, dispossess or this non-recognized or they lack recognition, right? So I guess that that's if by, after like watching the film, whoever you are, it doesn't matter if you are like a binary, non-binary, whatever you, you positioned yourself, if you knew before that you positioned yourself somewhere, if you start to look at yourself and to look at the, all the, the social and political techniques that you use in the ordinary life, there are fictions and you take for granted, right? And one of those technologies is, is cinema as well, right? It's a complex one, and I think that it's a, it's a, it's a really, it's a fascinating technology, but at the same time, for certain political minorities, it's also a very problematic technology, right? Because it has defined positions within this framework of representation that determine also conditions of uh, life and death, right? And so I guess that at the end, now that I, I made this film, and, I, and that I see what is happening with the film, the reaction, and I'm really happy that I did it, in a sense, because for me, and that also comes, comes back to the question of the political, which I, I didn't really answer, right? Because I also made a film, I guess, not just a, as a kind of a, as a philosophical project, but I also made it with a really like an activist methodology, right? When I, all the time that I was making the film, like my producer who's here can tell you, they, they were all the time telling me, Paul, but why are you doing things this way? You know, this, we don't do things this way in, in cinema. It's like, this is not the way we do it, right? But it, I did it the only way that I knew it, how to do it, which is basically using the, the knowledge of all the years of activism that I had behind, right? So basically working with the book, with the adaptation, but also working with the shooting, with the camera, in a, in a really activist way, right? So um, in a very much like a DIY way, right? Um, without, with very little budget, without many means, but at the same time, I think that everyone who was participating in the film knew exactly what we were doing. It was no one that really was there like saying, oh, well, I don't know, I'm just like holding this thing, no one. Basically we were really, really, maybe sometimes like the most, the day that we had like a chance of having like someone pushing, you know, like the camera and doing a traveling or something like that, which is quite very few days. Maybe we were like seven people working in the film and the rest were Orlando's and the families of Orlando sometimes, uh, friends, lovers of Orlando's that participated in the film, but that's it. So everyone knew exactly how this technology was being used and what they were doing in the film and why. And I, I think that that changes everything, yeah. I'm getting a sign that we're out of time, but thank, thank you for those comprehensive and thoughtful answers. And um, thank you so much.